come back the next week with Wednesdays where we can sit back, relax, Hello. take that midweek break, and talk about some of these things we found going on in the world of open source <laughs> and Linux in general. Hi, everyone. I'm hello, Stone. hello. That is Joe Bryant, and um, over there is Pedro Mateus. Hello. Watching us live, man. Kind of a busy week, but no, nothing, you know, which is understandable. A lot of people are still stuck at home. Companies are like, yeah, we're not going to push out too much. Open source projects are like, man, let's just chill out for a minute. But before we get into that, I want to bring up, um, I, I was talking about this earlier in the Discord earlier this week when I posted a screenshot. And I, I think, Pedro, you immediately got back to me and said, um, <laughs> Every day of the week? <laughs> Every day of the week is what you said to uh, what, I, what I wrote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if you've ever wanted to start off your response to someone with, that's what I delete expletive told you or been trying to tell you for one, two, three, four months. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm counting my thumb in that four, though. All right. Um, that was black magic. Um, they finally acknowledged that, hey, man. That that half a thousand, half a grand card that you bought for the show. Uh, yeah, patient zero. How you doing? Um, <laughs> <laughs> someone else had the problem. We discovered it was an issue. So keep your toes crossed. Hopefully a patch is in the work. They said that's going to be a thing. And that's kind of what I've been waiting on. A, to finish the review for this card. B, to reliably bring guests on. So um, that, that's been my, like, I even have the computer down here waiting for them. Come watch us and hang out with us on Saturday nights if you want to see that in action right now. It's a little sketchy. But also, I had a new little um, digital audio converter. Pedro, you have a uh, sound bar in your living room, right? Yes. Yeah. And, you know, you take a little toss link and just hook it right up. SPDIF, that's what the Steam box is plugged into. Yeah. <laughs> that That's pretty neat. This is a... Hi-Fi version of that with coaxial and optical spit of out. That's just USB. That works with Linux out of the box, and it also works with Android. So you can just take your laptop, nice. stick it in, do the thing. More on that at 11. That video, the preview video, is up for patrons right now. It should go out to the public mm, probably Friday afternoon when I finish all the little extra bits. Because they need to be written. Isn't that right, Van Gogh? <laughs> Pedro Van Gogh. Pedro got an argument with me <laughs> yesterday about Van Gogh. Yes, Van Gogh. Go. Oh, Van Gogh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was talking about the Hawkeye Go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you're having an interesting time enunciating it correctly, and you're like, "How's it going? Go, go, go." I'm like, "No, it's like." I Van went through Gogh. all the possible variants. <laughs> Then I'm, then just, just trying to be nice and like yeah it's like van gogh and it's like no it's not that's go it's like copy it's paste Vincent van boom. gogh yeah <laughs> <laughs> the enunciation closest to the dutch is not go 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 <laughs> some klingon sounding stuff pedro what have you been up to man uh i have been um besides being very busy at work silently uh indulging in my paranoia about the uh new x570 motherboard that's in this very system right now and how would one go I, about like loudly indulging their paranoia Could uh, be very probably paranoid, crinkling a lot of yeah. um tinfoil hats because that's a bit loud <laughs> oh. <laughs> but yeah no it, it, i've been paranoid because i put it in i it, hit the power button it came on i went into the uafi i set the docp to 3600 i can finally use that ram at the speed that i actually bought it for and it went yeah yeah no that that's cool there you go mm -hmm. really that's it <laughs> doesn't that add a whole new level of distrust <laughs> yeah that, that hence my paranoia <laughs> But yeah, no, it's been almost a week. It'll be a week tomorrow. And um, yeah, it's holding. <laughs> He's very excited. His camera's yeah, shaking. Yeah, very good. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I hit the table. <laughs> that almost got almost got an up reaction out of me because... <laughs> this metal stand is on the edge of a glass desk. So 
yes. There's a <laughs> weak reaction. It's like, oh, it's finally going to break. What's new with you, Jill? Oh, well, I had uh, actually, I installed Linux uh, Mint PPC on my Power Mac G3. It had originally had an old version of Debian on it. So I upgraded it uh, to Mint PPC and it's running really, really well. Um, usually, you know, I install Debian on my on my old world Macs. And um, so it was nice to try a different distro and that worked really cool. And I had funny once again on English Bob's uh, YouTube show. So that was really cool. <laughs> so I kind of know the answer to this, but out of morbid curiosity, um, in 2020, is there anything you can do on a PPC Mac outside? Kevin, can you even get a web browser up and running on those? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Firefox, Chromium. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, actually, there are some browsers specifically made for the PPC as well. And uh, yeah, there's e even, even, <laughs> <laughs> Not that you'd want to, but you can do the last version of Netscape as well. <laughs> we were talking about Netscape, Netscape or Netscape, as I used to call it earlier. <laughs> I had Netscape on my but G4, Firefox. but it was new at the time. Um, all right. I was just wondering if there's a, like a legitimate use case. But unfortunately, it sounds like our PPCs are left for the hobbyist. And Yeah, yeah. It's for those of us nerds who, who like to hoard computers, as Ben would call it. Well, I mean, listen, man, people do it with cars, people do it with electronics. They're like, what's that for? I cut it on sometimes. It's okay, and look Pine at Book it. Pro. He doesn't mean it. It's yeah. okay. The, the, oh, and the next <laughs> challenge is to get Discord running in Firefox on my PPC. So I haven't tested that yet. I'm, I'm going to play around with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the thing. Okay. You, you, you want to talk about Pine stuff? All right, let's do it. Bring yes. It. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this one is the post market OS Pine Book, uh, not Pine Book, Pine Phone. Uh, you can get the uh, full convergence package that includes the phone with three gigs of RAM and a 32 gig uh, EMMC module, along with the USB C dock. And the USB C dock gives you two extra USB type A's for a full 199 uh, you get uh, two extra USB type A's, one HDMI, and one um, Ethernet, RJ45 full size. So yeah, it, it, it is a dock for your phone. I'm not a big fan of this these kinds of docks for phones specifically because I would have much rather preferred the, uh, like the standing one that you put the phone standing up. Okay. But... Mm -hmm. This is uh, one step closer to the dream that I've been talking about for a long, long time. <laughs> USB superposition. Oh, yep. Bit him in the video. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. Quantum USB. <laughs> but yeah, the um, the dream is basically you have your phone with you the whole day. Wait a minute. And it's Wait your a phone. Minute. Did, did, did he just look at that <laughs> and miss? Hang on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think so. Okay. So you clearly tell he's like, I'm not going to do that again in the video. Um, okay. Double check. Double check. Oh, nope. <laughs> he did it again in the video. <laughs> I say that but, because yeah. I've done stuff like that too. I'm like, ah, oh, fine. Yes. Whatever. Just like the ability to have your phone with you the whole day and it just act as your phone, low power mm. device that lets you do your calls and your texts and your whatever else. And then you come home, you plug it into the dock, and you have a computer. <laughs> That's the dream. Of course, the Pine phone is a little underpowered for that. And uh, ideally, for the dream to work, you'd need also like an external GPU enclosure that you could drive two big res uh, high resolution monitors off of and play your games as well while your phone basically turns into a very large very pretty looking um processor that's what i want to see pedro <laughs> i want to see a pine phone with a 2080 ti hanging <laughs> off the side <laughs> make a type c dock please with actual type c uh thunderbolt ish like no, connectors <laughs> we're, we're gonna do it over rs 232 <laughs> yeah 800k per second <laughs> Ooh. yeah you know we, we had talked about this on uh in the after show of lww last week because this this uh landed after we did the show and um we were talking about how you know ven was saying he'd prefer to have it have a wireless dock and uh that would be you know to do everything wireless 
with convergence um, is when it will get adoption. But I think actually this will sell well despite the wires. And because a lot of people use this uh, for laptops, um, they use this paradigm and have uh, laptop docks for the laptops. I have plenty of them uh, for my ThinkPads. Uh, some of them came from Mir and Chat, <laughs> but I, I like having docks for my computers. So this, this, I think that this will work. And then the next generation will probably be wireless. So we're going to be <laughs> looking at, so $199, Pedro, that, that's for the phone and the dock, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Here's where I'm at with that, because, you know, just putting any views aside on the dream and the promise and the hope, because listen, I'm there of the convergence device that we've been promised for a decade, because we have. Maybe it's just a wee early to start selling like big accessories for something that's, I think even mm -hmm. admittedly from buying like, this isn't finished product, guys, go like play with it, yeah. see if you can get it working. No. Yeah, it's it's a it's a low end phone. It, right now that that is very much just like okay, here's our phone. Go play with it, improve the software, and then we'll see what happens. And here's the dock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the dock is thanks to the uh post market OS uh folks who decided, you know what? We want to try and get this convergence thing going. All right. I wish him the best of luck, <laughs> man. I absolutely yeah. do. But we do have a new version of Thunder Chicken. Yeah, this is but really yeah. exciting. Um, you know, the with uh, the 68 release, they had really done lots of modernization to the UI. Hey, it's an ESO release. <laughs> I get it in Debian and love it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And, um, you know, they just redesigned the Compose window and the Account Setup window and made it much more modern and minimal and not so verbose. And they actually upgraded the um, vector, the, the folder icons to be vector so that they'll do better scaling in high oh, DPI no more, mode. more um, really, really pixely <laughs> folders. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, and that, and you can uh, color customize them, which is really cool. And one of the biggest deals here is, of course, there's a new dark theme, which is really, really awesome. And an upcoming release will be using OpenPGP to encrypt all your email. So, very good. Very good, Thunderbird. Yeah, <laughs> I read through the article, and one thing I noticed was... Uh, a lot of mentions of Windows and Mac OS. Actually, most of the screenshots were taken in Mac OS. Uh, and not a single mention of Linux. In <laughs> fact, I hit Control F and I typed Linux and there was one hit. And it was the first comment. So that, that's just <laughs> Thunderbird Thunder. Yeah. They're just letting you know, man. It's covered. We don't have to bring it up. You know, you know you're good. You know you're good. That's how you know you're the in crowd, man. Dude. Dark mode makes me so happy. Yes. Because that, that is like the, one of the first things I check in dark mode, despite the valiant efforts of the people behind XFCE and their attempts to theme a dark mode, Thunderbird has proven resilient. It's like, no, not all. And um, I, I'm just very glad for that. Here's a question. I'm, I'm running um, 68 because... I mean, 10, and I, I just need to do one thing. I need to check emails. Have they figured out high DPI? Because on this, I have to go into the advanced and custom and like manually set a string in order to increase the font size on everything. They didn't mention anything like that. Yeah, other the, than the icons. The, yeah. yeah, the SVG icons. So those will certainly scale better, but they didn't. Mm. specify yeah. any uh, high dpi stuff <laughs> i'm looking forward to that um i'm the wrong person to ask you can show me those screenshots and say see all the great work they did and i believe you but like uh it looks like a mail window and that looks like a mail window i can figure it out but good on that i want to see a focus uh on performance man that that's where i want to see that very fine point but because let's be honest most people using Thunderbird use it because we have needs that go well above and beyond the abilities of a web browser. I need advanced yeah. filtering. I have a ton of accounts set mm -hmm. up. I have multiple folders for spam and stuff and cross. It still takes a minute. The two slowest things in my box. <laughs> Steam. <Yeah. laughs> Steam takes a minute to load. But 
Thunderbird walks up to Steam, knocks it out of the way, and is like, watch this. <laughs> yeah, watch this. It hangs up there and, for you know, a little that's, while. That's on our 24th thread, Threadripper, with an NVMe <laughs> drive. And it's like, don't get in a hurry. I'm not, listen, we're talking three seconds, but that does feel like an eternity. <laughs> Yeah, no, nowadays mm. when, you know, you have your entire system booting off of an NVMe that the moment the UEFI uh, goes away, you get like the login screen. It's like, oh, okay. There, well, you're done. definitely living in a world, if you put it in that type of perspective, you know, we have systems that boot in six, maybe your application t shouldn't take half the boot time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Another <laughs> thing. Um, fix the uh, V-Sync. Because that's an issue, man. There's nothing like seeing like screen daring and Thunderbird. Daring when you yeah, scroll. Yeah, that is. <laughs> and just yeah, Thunderbird. Point, yeah. Nothing else on the system. That, <laughs> that's easy enough to fix. So there's a workaround for that, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Uh, uh, it's the same one that you can do in Firefox. Usually, uh, you disable hardware acceleration oh. yeah. and while it's running completely off of the cpu it goes oh this is how i'm supposed to render things okay all right <laughs> now we should point out the more recent versions of firefox that's not an issue it loans and you don't have they to fix that yeah, yeah, yeah. So. so i guess it's a good thing that uh, maybe 78 is pulling off much of that same uh base uh, they're also getting rid of the zol stuff uh, all of the xul uh, framework is uh, finally being um whisked away into greener uh, pastures and shot in the back of the head <laughs> finally <laughs> hopeless <Zool>. romantic um <laughs> yes so does this if i buy this do i get like a free berry allen <laughs> oh. you might but uh this is not what we're here for no 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 can i put it in a particle accelerator <laughs> This is the Starlight Mark III Linux laptop, and uh, it is a very, very low power 11.6 um, inch laptop. Basically, imagine like the netbooks of old, only instead of 10, uh, a 1024 by 768 or 1024 by 600 screen, you get a full 1080p one with a quad core Pentium uh, that it's the Pentium Silver N5000. Uh, it comes with 8 gigabytes of uh, 2.4 or 2400 megahertz LPDDR4 RAM. And we need to thank uh, Artharon for bringing this to our attention. Uh, Shatrealm, yes, yes. Denzin, and um, one of the most active, I think, right behind Linux Neuron. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, he's the one who uh, brought this to our attention. And I guess, you know, that Pentium is uh, kind of how they managed to get that sub 500 price tag and you know going with a fanless design which is also a big thing considering it's a teeny tiny little laptop yeah yeah no that that's okay <laughs> uh, so yeah. it's fanless like a tablet yes but it's a tablet with a built-in keyboard oh so and it's, it's an x86 does. <laughs> doesn't come off <laughs> I don't think so no <laughs> not what, on this what, one <laughs> what if I really wanted to if you really wanted to yes but then you'll need to plug something into the keyboard to act as a display <laughs> watch pay close attention I can only do this uh, once <laughs> one thing I want to bring up yeah. is I'm unfamiliar with Manjaro 20.0 XFC. That one's eluded me. I, I'm unfamiliar with this application. It's it's a distro. It's Manjaro, the version twenty. You can Arch. download the. So it's an XFC, <laughs> XFC spin. <one>. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because I, I see the other desktops. So like we get New Mercedes Elementary OS, whatever. And Manjaro's got it. So all right, right on, man. I'm down with that. What this is this going to cost me a billion bucks or like four hundred twenty-six dollars? Yeah. yeah. It's, I, I was impressed with, you know, it, it's a, a wonderful middle range and very performant laptop, you know, and there's not that many Linux laptops, face it, that are in this category of middle of the road uh, or, they, you know, they lower usually end. go a bit higher. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> so I was really happy to see this. <laughs> but yeah, the good thing here is that they, uh, for, you know, that netbook form factor, 
most of the other uh, OEMs tend to go for like EMMC modules and they slap at EMMC like a 64 gig EMMC module. Don't worry, Pinebook. I'm not talking about you. You have an NVMe Aww. drive in you. Um, <laughs> no, they actually have a SATA SSE and you get SATA speeds off of it. So that that's that's really nice. <laughs> There's your advantage over a tablet right there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Definitely. It doesn't bottleneck on storage. <laughs> Google, make a new tablet with NVMe and I'll buy it in five years. Well, like two after you just, mm. about a year and a half after you discontinue it. Okay. <laughs> 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 Wrap your minds around this, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, one thing I like to play around with and... Um, make some guides on as like doing audio in Linux because like, ah, it's hard. And I'm like, ah, it's not hard. Let me show you how to do it. Something everyone is going to be tangoing with in the future is something called Pipewire. It is the one standard, something like core audio on Apple. You know, if you got a Mac, you just plug the audio thing in, audio thing does audio. And you're like, that's it. That's all you have to know about it. Pipewire aims to bring that level of uh, frictionless interaction to Linux. And one of the ways you're going to be able to do that is with effectively a session manager. This is a wire plumber, man. It's like, uh, if you're familiar with Jack, it's like Katia or non-session manager, which is a session manager. And what I'm happy about is they are continuing, continuing to work on Jack integration because that's going to be a big thing for me and anyone currently doing uh, real-time audio processing and stuff under Linux, uh, being able to bring Pipewire into the tool chain because they're going to add Dbus support and just the ability to handle the negotiation between what Pipewire is like, this is Jack, do I need to do something? Oh, I got to send that to Pulse Audio, done, done, and done. It's going to make me very happy just removing a layer of friction that I was sitting back going, I don't have to redo all this, which I am because Pipewire is the future. It's not Pulse Audio. Thank you, Flying Spaghetti Monster. Um, <laughs> Looking forward to it. The one thing I'm worried about is like the one comment on this article. You know, um, this this dude brought up a pretty good question. Um, oh, I yeah. wonder who that dude is. I don't know, man, but I like the cut of this guy's <laughs> joke. It's like, good to see the continued work with Jack integration. Does it work with NetJack? Using NetJack 2 with nice. NetJack 1 in the studio to link all the PC. Man, I got a lot in common with this dude. I don't mm -hmm. the streaming box these days. Uh, I should email him. Oh. Well, you are the ultimate wire plumber, Vin. <laughs> Vin had to take pause to actually let that sink in. No, Vin had to not say something. <laughs> yes, yes, take pause. <laughs> that, that wasn't a pause. That was slam the emergency breakdown. It's like, no. Um, this is good. I'm looking forward to it. This is going to be a great thing. You know, it's, this is unfortunately this entire project, man, is effectively not Raptor bus proof because it's uh, effectively one dude doing a lot of heavy lifting with pipe wire itself. But the, you know, if you're going to get to play with it with a door. The days of, Hey man, I bought an interface. I want to record on it, plug it in. Oh, look, there's the thing I need to like, just connect the things real quick and I can start recording. Those days are in Linux's future. That makes me very happy. Or anybody, if you're streaming or just you want to play music, hooking up synths, MIDI keyboards, it's going to be a reality. And this, this is how we're going to do it. So I just wanted to give that a little bit of a mention. Calabra. Those guys, they do a good job. They're awesome. <laughs> do amazing work. Console's still around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so is. this is the KDE Terminal Emulator um, console, which a lot of us uh, know and love. And, you know, it's really got a lot of progressive features and some new ones in the works. But um, one YouTube, of the, the, YouTube, yeah. I hate this. Stop doing this. If I pause oh. the video, that doesn't mean I want you to cover it up. It's because I need to pause it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, you know, some of my favorite features of console are the the image thumbnails, um, copy file path, and 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 open with a specific app, which is something that I use my file manager a lot for. But um, console does it 
you know, right in the terminal. And it's it's really, really convenient. If I was in a terminal and I started mousing over JPEGs, PNGs, or something <laughs> like that, and it popped up a thumbnail, I would start looking for the hidden camera. Like, <laughs> yeah, when I first saw that, I, it kind of it, it freaked me out a little bit because because <laughs> it, it kind of scary. You know, it's it, it almost scared me a little bit because it's like that's not supposed to do that. Oh, that's a feature. <laughs> uh, the number cool. one pipe plumber wire thing guy. I am not. I have no fear. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, one of the things that uh, they've been uh, they've been doing over the past uh, couple of versions of console is the split windows. And if you've used Terminator or Tmux, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You can split your terminal into multiple different ones, all inside the same window, which is kind of what I want because I have all the screen real estate. And if I'm in a terminal, chances are I don't mind having it full screen and just splitting it into however many different windows I need. And um, not only that, but you can also have, uh, they're actually going to be introducing that, broadcast groups. And broadcast groups, if you don't know what it is, basically if you have a couple of the different uh, split windows that console gives you running off of the same bash instance, you get the output onto those different terminals wherever they may be on screen. So you can have like different... Um, different windows or different split windows into in the same broadcast group or in different ones so very yes nice. I'd, I'd give <laughs> me that give me that and i'll drop terminator like that <laughs> <laughs> man yeah i'm just so used to using uh tmux or you know <laughs> x term it's, it's, it's kind of my go-to but it's it's nice to have one with all these extra features print all right what's this <laughs> documentation what, i oh oh See, this better come with a user manual, man, because I, again, if, <laughs> like, yes, that's neat, being able to right-click and do the copy path, open with application, all that needs to, I would never think to do that. <laughs> I didn't realize you oh, could drag yeah. and drop until last week. It's, I'm only slightly being facetious, because <laughs> the drag and drop functionality was not a thing, and I never grew up with, like, Windows or anything. I'm like, eh, oh, yeah. oh, all right, fine, that's neat. So it's good that um, we're seeing that added functionality. Do you think it'll be more of a distraction or more useful? I think it won't make much of a difference because those purists that just use the keyboard while they're in the terminal, they won't ever know because that that's not a thing. They will never mouse over or right click anything. Uh, and everyone else will go, oh, that's that's neat. All right. Okay. <laughs> I right click in terminals sometimes. I accident. <laughs> on URLs <laughs> to open. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's like I, right click, open URL, they're done. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. Well, absolutely. Every now and then I'll click on a URL. I'm like, so does this do a thing yet? <laughs> uh, the, you have to right click. That That's it. <laughs> right click, <Yeah>. open URL. <laughs> Half expecting like the W3H, whatever browser that's <laughs> to open. I'm like, what? <laughs> 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 yeah, I had discovered the the right click and uh, um, you know copy file path a while ago, and that was by sheer accident as well. <laughs> yeah, that's been in there a while. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool. So, real quick, I want to give this a mention because uh, I was looking for a thing, and guess what? Thing was there. Don't bear. Mm, doesn't that sound a little naughty? But it's not. It's actually a very, very interesting piece of kit that'll let you organize all of your dot files in one spot with no sim links. That's what I was looking for. And flat learning curve, customizable. Pedro, are you pleased? Well, would you even use something like this? Because this is like I'm dealing with my own little um, GitHub issue and. Well, not yeah, yeah. Th that is useful mostly for people who are running. Uh their own git instance or they have a bunch of different uh git repos set up on their machine and they don't want to have to like they're sim -link horribly all organized. Of the dot files. that's what he's trying to say but he's being <laughs> yeah <laughs> they don't want to have like all of the dot files sim linked to their uh home folder uh because that's how other um tools do it and that's how they manage it with this one it basically lets you manage all of your git dot files and it uses um fzf um to set up different profiles 
there was already another project that they mentioned uh, that did that, but they said they weren't terribly happy with how that particular project was doing it, so they decided to make it as intuitive, interactive. Um, interactive was definitely one of the words that they used, but there was another one. I'm going to say this and because this is why I was tracking down. This is dumbed down enough to where I can use it. I'm not a developer by any stretch of the imagination. And I can That's a good CLI right there. <laughs> barely get, get yeah. up and running and manage my own revisions. But this just does the job. So Yeah, it does. And I like also that you, you don't just have to use it use it in Git. You can use it uh, system wide to look through your dot files and edit them in text. And um, I'm going to find this useful, useful editing my uh, Unity config files for games, for editing the resolutions. Be a nice, quick way to do it. And go through, you know, several games at a time and, and go through the configs. So that's where I, I, I can hear Python case. developers um, are very happy <laughs> about its uh, existence, according to uh, one Matthew Comando. Yes, one Matthew, Matthew. Comando was like, I wanted to develop that. Someone did it. Like, hey. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> where would you? I wouldn't be terribly. Is that something Home D is trying to do? Just like put force everything into like dot config, period. No ifs, ands, or buts. Yeah, it seems not like it. Right not now? Completely. <laughs> not entirely, at least. Uh, right now, Home D is very much trying to make a um, modular home directory because if you've ever had the uh, unfortunate accident of <laughs> psyching your entire home directory <laughs> uh maybe if you even had a backup and you tried to just like put the backup there where the other one used to be it doesn't really work because it's Nobody like gives no, you that's enough not... false hope to burn a weekend <laughs> yeah ah. uh, it's like <laughs> that's not the actual folder and the system knows that that's not the actual folder so it straight up doesn't recognize it. Home D is trying to get rid of that. <laughs> Sim links. Sim links. <laughs> That's my documents folder, my <laughs> pictures folder, and my music folder. Music folder is the sim link to the NAS. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> I legitimately on this box because I was moving a home folder and just resetting everything. I'm not really the home folder's fault, but um, well, actually it is because I had all the paths saved in all the applications. The mount, because you have you have media, then you have MNT. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My ancient, ancient self just does MNT by default when I'm setting up. I'm like, what's the mount point? Doop, 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 doop. And it's like, no, those are all supposed to be in media. You know what? I'm not redoing that. <laughs> yeah. All of my extra drives that are separate partitions of their own are in MNT. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, that's generally where I put mine too. <laughs> so, we don't normally get to throw this out, but when we do, it's always a special occasion because... <laughs> yes, here we go. Microsoft. Microsoft loves Linux. Rips the heart they out of love it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Our long national nightmare is finally over. Procmon has been released for Linux. I'm not making that up. This is not April Fool's. No, this is Procmon. It's a Linux reimagining or reimagining. No, mm -hmm. reimagining of the Re classic. You were right the first yeah, time. System <laughs> terms. I didn't know where Microsoft was like. How are you trying to spin this, Redman? Um, system internal suite for Windows. Procmon provides a convenient and efficient way for Linux developers to trace Cisco activity on the system. Here it is in all of its preview glory. I will and say yes, this. And yes, you need to run it with sudo. I was getting to that it's in the notes. Um, 20 plus megabytes to download. You get yes. it installed. 57.7. Ah, look at you. Yeah. I, uh, you didn't want me taking your stuff. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, man. Um, that's borderline impressive. You know, 50 megs for a command line tool that really does bunk all, man. It does need lib in curses 5 libtinfo5, at least on Debian 10. There's a Debian package for it. And as Pedro said, you have to run it with sudo because I went, what, really? Wait, huh? Yeah. Really? <laughs> How? You made Windows and you want me to enter root? Uh, uh, okay, fine. It <laughs> installs but very I uninstalled well. it. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I did attempt to launch. I did, it launched to a completely blank screen with like the menus up at the top at the bottom. It wouldn't do anything else. 
I just sit mm-hmm. there. Knowing that... Yeah, no, you need to give it, like, root permissions I did. to the file system. I did. Yeah. <laughs> it, you thing. can't get it to launch unless you... Yeah. <laughs> it did nothing. It just sit there. It's like, uh, come on. You can, you, you can select the file menus. Those work, but can I get any up? Nah. Yeah, no, I tried to launch it as like, all right, Procmon. Oh, you need to run this with sudo. Sudo uninstall, uh, apt uninstall Procmon. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> yeah. Look at you. I, 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 I spelled that with purge, just in case. Oh, boy. It didn't well, install so- any um, yeah. dependency, so I wasn't terribly worried. <laughs> Well, it's still very early. <laughs> it's still very early days for <laughs> Procman, and you know, I I've heard um, actually yesterday on Linux Unplugged we were talking about this, and it's uh, a lot of the Arch users were were complaining that it's not in the AUR yet, and some Fedora users were saying it doesn't work yet in Fedora. So Microsoft definitely needs to fix that. <laughs> sounds it sounds like Arch and Fedora users need to learn how to compile something from source. Um, <laughs> yes, that, yeah. that was that was kind of my thinking. <laughs> what, I, what, I, what I actually want out of Microsoft is an update to the uh, Teams preview client that they've had on Linux for a good long while now because I use that for work mm-hmm. and I have it installed on this box because if I'm going to be doing work, it's like I do as much as I can from here and only use the work laptop for what I absolutely have to. So Teams update. Please. We, d- Thank d- you. Is that a standalone <laughs> yes. application? Uh, it, it's uh, an electron wrap. Type okay, of thing, w- like what Discord, if you get an update, yeah. but it, it needs those digits? So <laughs> let me get up a new password. Look, I have the... <laughs> I'm not going to run Teams with sudo. That, that's just not going to happen. Come on, guys. <laughs> no, I'm not running a browser with sudo. Sorry, no. It'll no. Just be like running... <laughs> it'll be an authentic Windows experience. Why don't we say? Oh, boy. <laughs> no, there's a reason I hate that operating system. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Something we absolutely don't hate are the beautiful people who make our shows possible. Uh, we are completely listener-financed. Mm-hmm. We don't do ads. We don't have anything like that. No ads in our web zone. No ads in the podcast. If you want to help out with what we do, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. You get access to a special show we do each and every week, our production meeting where we talk about normally movies, but occasionally what we have planned. Coming up in the show, you get a custom RSS feed. You get all the secret stuff. Uh, A couple of things come out early, like the uh, doc video. That's sitting there right now, currently at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Uh, You can take an early look. I put those out and like, hey, look over these. See if I really messed something up. Then it'll go out um, (laughs) publicly. A couple of days later, a bunch of rewards up to and including access to our Discord, where we hang out the other six days of the week. That's genuinely the slack for the show. We don't have like a special... Pedro, you will attest, if we say more than like two communications in this one Hangouts <laughs> thing that we've had going for seven years, something's broken, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's like once a week, if that. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. It's to the point where I hear the notification from that on any device. I'm like, oh, something's wrong. Um, <laughs> oh, it's like the, I heard of that the other day when you said something on the Hangouts. I was like, oh, I haven't heard of that sound in a while. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... That's where we legitimately <laughs> hang out is in Discord going back and forth. And we have live channel. We have IRC. It's all bridged together um, for the live shows. So no worries there. Twitch, IRC, Discord, all together. But we got a little, a little Camp Hagen room over there for um, Patreon members and I think uh, Twitch subs. I think that's how it works. Yes. If that They're works, the if you're a sub, go say something <laughs> in Discord. Sorry, double <laughs> sure that it works. Uh, we got wish zones if you want to end up on this horrible wall and be blamed for your fiscal irresponsibility helping us pick up stuff for the studio. You're welcome to do that, and I will shame you appropriately, but but we can keep throwing, like, I, I double dare you. If you get, uh, Pedro and Jill have, like, little personal wish lists. You can mm-hmm. send a message. I make them read it. They don't have a choice. Yes. <laughs> yeah, True no, story. All of these. <laughs> I have read the ball. Oh, oh, what? We're, we're doing that again? Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, you're still winning. <laughs> hey, I have mine in the scrapbook. Pedro, it's not a contest, as <laughs> long as I'm winning. <laughs> um, but you're winning, yes. Yeah. I am totally winning. I keep each and every one of them, man, because I've been trying to figure out a way to, like, get it in a poster. 
Mm-hmm. Some, yeah. Some, some of you nutters are just clever. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, there's some more smiths out there. <laughs> there there's some good ones in here, man. Um, <laughs> that's beautiful. Um, thanks for letting us do this. We're going to keep on rocking on and doing more. But here you go. Mm. That looks like blackberry a cookie, pie. Doesn't it? Mm. Blackberry or boysenberry <laughs> pie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a diseased cookie. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> a really a chunky huge... cookie. <laughs> yeah. See, I put it in a pan just or a to waffle. throw people off. <laughs> <laughs> Turning a raspberry pie into a camera. The idea is to make a raspberry pie high quality camera look like a camera using a 3D printer. Well, that that's cheating. Because if I get a 3D printer, everything looks like a Raspberry Pi, man. Uh, <laughs> 3D printer Raspberry Pi. Yeah. So this is taking, uh, what are they using with this? Um, Hyperpixel 40 Touch designs and cl- this, that, that. Where are we at on the TSA acceptance factor on this one? That, if you send that down a bit more, that just looks like a really funky camera. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> like I said, you need to set it down a bit more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that, that, lo- that looks like something that I, the case I built to hide something in, usually like liquor. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah. The, oh, it actually, um, if you get some really uh, high quality, dense um, filament that you can stack properly and then send it down smooth. Mm-hmm. really really smooth that will straight up look like a camera yeah <laughs> and use some good paint <laughs> that helps a lot yeah. <laughs> yeah that hides a lot of stuff yeah I <laughs> like what they're doing because people are starting to like oh we've seen a few people play because this is using the uh Raz by high quality camera mm-hmm. and I understand. I mean, the guy's uh, still working, but I, I like the collaboration in the bottom of the comments because it's like, man, I did the shutter button because if you look at the picture, you're like, why is that a keyboard? And, you know, as one normally does on hikes. Because it's a pie. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't make the shutter button work. Yeah. So, so yeah. he was looking for help with that, with the programming and making one. <laughs> That's kind of brilliant. And still some offers in there. So they're going to work that out. Maybe not something I would do, but you talk about a good project, you know? Yeah, it's, it is. It's, it's and wonderful. Fun. If you can actually find a way to make a camera that works with a shutter button that, you know, anyone who's tinkering around with a Raspberry Pi could put together easily, mm-hmm. you're going to get a lot of money. <laughs> because there are a lot of people who saw the high oh, quality this... camera and went, I want that. Yeah. They want to snap so on I need case. a case that. for it. <laughs> Look yeah. like a giant push. What if you can make it on the button that like poured a double shot? <laughs> ah. Blink. <laughs> I, as I might be at my sporting event, not wanting to pay eight dollars a pop. Okay. Yeah. No. Allegedly, I read about that in a book somewhere. Um. Hey. If you want to tell us about your projects or alleged projects, we're always open for that. Uh, maybe we got something right. Maybe we got something wrong. Maybe you just want to say, Pedro, your shirt has too much blue in it. Well, <laughs> I suppose uh, you'd have a point there. But the best way to let us know about your points is not to stab us with needles while we're walking down the street. It's to go to LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the contact button and you fill out the form. Make sure the show that you're sending it to is LWDW, because otherwise you might be sending some uh, unwitting hate mail to that Saturday Moon magic? show, What We Do. No, moon Portuguese. <laughs> moon that is blue. <laughs> but yeah, that's literally all you need to do. Just careful on the uh, the URLs that you include in that particular form because the spam golem, it hungers. It will eat it and it will probably be a month <laughs> later before I ever see it because that goes to an entire different service that I remember to check about once a month. So there, there's... Oh yeah, there's if you're emotions. one of our... If you're one of our Patreons, you can do like Rohit just did and uh, tell me that my shirt has too much blue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when it really <laughs> doesn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> Mine has probably too much white. <laughs> so. It's <Nope>. a shirt. <laughs> Can't go there. No. <laughs> Nemo writes. 
camera modules. See, I threw this in because related story. Look at that. Good yes. timing, man. When I heard about the Raspberry Pi high quality camera module, I thought, was everyone else? I thought was every Nemo. Dude. Um, uh, <laughs> DIY Aww. DSLR. But then I wondered, why why can't other SPC platforms come out with their own high quality cameras? It's kind of what we were just talking about. Um, mm -hmm. Again, tying it together, man, like, uh, you know, the producer I am. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I suspect it's a lack of demand, but I want your thoughts. How's that rewind button holding up? Um, <laughs> would I have to 3D print my own camera mount for a sensor using... One of the standards, MIBIs or SEIs, I'm... Very, Am I starting a Kickstarter? A Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently, no. No, you don't need to start a Kickstarter. You can go help those dudes. Oh. <laughs> Just, yeah, they, they did it. <laughs> There's a way to do it. I, I, I see an article from The Verge, and uh, I, did, did it just melt and catch on fire somehow with him? <laughs> then they took the video down yeah it's because they put uh two layers of thermal paste so all the heat was just st stuck inside so <laughs> when raspberry pi first um announced the um camera the high quality camera i was like oh okay girlfriend uh it's like maybe i'll try to get one after because we all know they are incapable of realizing that everything they make they need to make by four. I understand why they don't do it, but eh, maybe like make it by two. I was thinking about picking one up, you know, for 50 bucks. But the reason people didn't immediately flock out, because now you can get the high quality camera module at a fruit or the Raspberry Pi store. It's because it's a $50 12.3 megapixel IMX 477 sensor from Sony. Yes. It's a lot better than the original raspberry pi camera module which <laughs> you know if you've ever seen like a maybe five-year-old mobile phone front facing that's pretty much the <laughs> quality what it you were like, gonna get yes. it was technically probably <laughs> 720p occasionally on tuesdays <laughs> after 3 p.m um it, it's not that great a camera i mean if you look like a when i say that it's infinitely better than what was already available but mm -hmm. As far as like comparing that, and a lot of it's got to do with image processing on the back end too, and what it can do. But it's okay. But compared to a modern smartphone, if you put a like, you get like a Samsung. When your Samsung is definitely if you get an iPhone. Any of the galaxies, really? Yeah. It's like the cameras on those things are amazing. <laughs> or you, the Pixel phones, the Google Pixel phones. Pixel phones yeah. too. Recent Pixel phone. <laughs> it, there's no comparison, and that that's why when. You know, it's not that great a deal when you put the time, energy, and all that, and you end up with something that doesn't look as good as, like, point-and-shoots. So, that's the unfortunate yeah. reality. But it's still a fantastic project. Like I was saying, man, if you got, like, you want to keep some kids busy over the summer, yeah, let them play with the 3D printer. They won't burn <laughs> themselves that much. <laughs> <laughs> they'll burn them themselves, like, twice, and then they'll break a lot of projects and burn themselves another two or three times. <laughs> Can you imagine being like 12, oh, eight, eight or nine and having your like a 3D printer, like a reasonable one? We're talking like four or $500 one. We're not talking like mm -hmm. one of these, because I don't watch those. I'm like, I want one of those. <laughs> after, <laughs> what would you have gotten into after you printed that first thing? Uh, I have no idea. I, I, I don't even have a, 3d printer of my own <laughs> maybe I... when i have a bigger apartment <laughs> <laughs> i've printed some of my uh 3d objects i've made in animation what would you um... have printed as a child this is our thought um, experiment actually some of my sculptures uh, uh different sizes for doing uh, i used to do a lot of stop motion uh -huh. i was really and, into cars yeah. when i was young so probably <laughs> i would have made some jacked up lego bricks and connects and constructs that that, that was my thing that's immediately what i was thinking about i'm like yeah i could build all kind of because that was my 3d printer back in the day man between legos yeah. and constructs i'm like hey, i want to make a thing and i'll put that together that's really awesome but hey if you're that's... gonna make a camera uh, send some pictures man i mean me of and of the camera 
there we go. Nah, man. I mean, just, just, just take it with your just take it with your mobile and write totes Raspberry Pi camera and like leave the EXIF data in there so it's clearly not. That'd be awesome. Hi, Wow Boy. How you doing? Hey, man. <laughs> Listen, what, just because we did that like three, three times, times, yeah. <laughs> chill, man. <laughs> Watch me, I'll do it again, right? Ah, <laughs> oh, they did that on Google Plus too, where you could see uh, the exit of data. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> that, that's the thing. All right, beautiful people. We got to get out of here, man. We're running late. Uh, we will see you next week. Um, thanks for joining Bye -bye. us live. If you want to watch this, <laughs> uh, we're live on Twitch and after the fact on YouTube. And as most yep. of you know, podcast format. But we're going to roll some credits. Yeah. Yeah, if I can get to the right <laughs> thing in time. I got too many buttons. <gasps> <gasps>